So in this session we're going to be looking at the menu options within the Suprema BioStation 2. Uh, the device isn't a touch screen, uh, it has a separate keypad uh, and uh, some arrow keys over here on the right hand side. Um, so I'm going to press the escape key to get into the menu and I'm just going to zoom in so it can concentrate on the actual screen display itself. So the first option it goes to is user. Now we're not going to look at user to, in this session. Um, that's where we would add new employees and new administrators onto the device. Um, but instead we're going to use the arrow keys to move across initially to look at uh, display and sound. Okay, so in this menu screen, we're going to drop down and we're going to have a look at uh, backlight timeout. So that's by default is set to 20 seconds. Uh, so that means after 20 seconds the uh, display, the idle display, will dim down to quite a dark screen. Um, that saves on energy, it saves um, on the amount of, sort of light that it's emitting, um, but what we're going to do is actually just increase that to uh, 60 seconds. Uh, you might have knowledge, noticed there that the, the idle timeout just uh, kicked in um, so we're going to have a look at that one next but let's get to that one up to 60 seconds okay and then drop down to the next menu option which is menu timeout again that's 20 seconds so if I don't press a, a button while I'm in the menu for uh, within a 20 second period it'll time out like it just did uh, back to its idle screen so I th think we should definitely increase that up to 60 seconds you can make it always on if you want to, but it does mean that uh, you, you might accidentally leave the device uh, in the menu up, in the menu state uh, and that might uh, allow somebody else to access the menu that you don't want them to. So safety first, uh, we'll leave it at 60 seconds. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, authentication. So we've got a number of different options within this menu, so we can look at finger, card or ID. Um, these are how the terminal is set up to accept either a finger on its own or a finger plus a pin or a finger plus a card. So let's just look at finger first. So we've got this little graphical display that shows uh, it's got always against finger only and it's got never against finger plus password or pin number. So that basically means that we can uh, use the device just by putting in our finger only, which is exactly how we want it to be in this instance. So we'll escape out of there and then we'll go down to card. So here we can see that card only is set to never and that, that is the default option. But uh, quite often we normally set our devices up so that you can just use a card only if you need to, to um, clock in and clock out. So what we'll do is we'll move down further down the screen to this option which is set to always, uh, which is uh, card plus finger or card plus pin, and we'll change that to be never, and that then allows us to go back up to card only and change that to be always. And I'll press OK, and that would now allow us to clock in and out of the device just using a card or a fob only. Similarly, under ID, you can choose whether or not the, the device will allow you to type in your ID number plus a finger, um, or an ID number plus a fob, or a card, uh, or a password. Um, so it's currently set to this option here, which is ID number plus finger, which will, it will allow, or ID number plus pin number, which it will also allow. And that's fine. We normally leave it as that setting. Okay, TNA mode. If we have a look in here, so we can set the uh, device so that it is either uh, not using TNA mode at all uh, by uh, pressing it on to not use. So uh, that basically means that an employee would not uh, be able to press any of the function keys on the device. Uh, they would have no function at all. The person just needs to put their finger on to clock in or to clock out. Alternatively, we can change that by changing one of the options here. So we could change it by user, and then um, we can then change the event. Um, so we could say that F1 is an in, and F2 is an out, for example. Um, F3 and F4, you, 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 uh, at the moment, it says in duty and out duty. But using uh, the software, um, either BioStar 2 or um, 
uh, our bio command software we can actually change those uh, uh, display options as to what each function key does so generally speaking most people leave it as uh, not use and we'll just leave it as that for now okay so that's all the options I was wanting to look at in there for now um, we'll come out of there and we'll pop down to uh, device so here we can look at the date and time settings so first thing which is uh, highlighted there is time sync and it's currently set to enabled now if you're using the device with Biostar 2 or a similar software you might want to have that option on which basically means that the time uh, between the server uh, the Biostar 2 server and the device was going to be synchronized um, but if you're using software such as Focus um, then you might not want to have that on because it works in a different way so in that instance we would set time sync to be disabled um, and then we can then have the option of changing the uh, date format so we can change that to be um, UK date format if we wanted to we can change uh, it from being 24 hour clock to um, 12 hour clock, I'll keep it as 24 hour um, and if we actually wanted to change the, the date itself or the time now that we've got uh, time sync uh, disabled we can actually do that if we needed to do that um, so we'll change the uh, uh, we'll just have a look at changing the date on there Oops. So other many options we can uh, look down here at are things like uh, restart device. So if we ever needed to reboot the device for whatever reason, um, for example, it might drop off the network and we might want to re reboot the device just to get it back on the network and we've got that option there, we can do that. Um, restore default uh, does what it says. It does a full hardware reset of the, of the device. Uh, so it will wipe out all of our settings. So we're not going to do that in this, in this instance, but it's there if we ever needed it. Um, relay, we can have a look at that. Um, by default it says not use we could change that to say use and we can set the uh, open time of the relay um, so basically every time that there is a valid finger or a valid card that gets used in this instance the relay would would fire would click so that could be quite a, a fairly basic way of uh, performing some access control using the device I'm just going to put it set it back to not use um, a few other options we've got in here include uh, device info um, that can be useful this is where we can find out the device's MAC address if we needed to find that out um, uh, and firmware versions and hardware versions and its serial number uh, so that's all that information is in there so if we come out of device settings and then go across to network so we can uh, look have a look in here we can uh, set it to uh, we can look at TCP IP um, have a look there. and what we'll do is we'll drop down to where it says DHCP um, by default the device is DHCP um, uh, but for some uh, different types of software you might not want to set it as that um, so focus for example we prefer it to be a, um, a fixed IP address so we will change that to be disabled and once we've done that we can then um, actually change the IP address to what we'd like it to be if we needed to do that so we can just uh, uh, wipe out the existing address and type in the new one to put a, a full stop or a dot um, between our uh, numbers um, we actually press the right arrow key to do that um, a few people have called us in the past asking how to do that exact thing so that's the IP address, we can uh, set the, the gateway okay and then we can set the subnet mask valid IP address there so I must have done something wrong let's just have a look and see what I've done oh yeah so I missed the one out at the top well at least it tells us that I 
Okay. Now, one important factor on this is when you are um, putting in a, a, a new IP address, putting in a fixed IP address, the device has to have a, a network connection, um, a, a valid network connection, um, for it to be able to, to perform that operation. Otherwise, the uh, details that you put in uh, probably won't get saved. Um, this has caught a few people out over the years, so I just wanted to uh, make that point. It has to be plugged into a network connection somewhere uh, for it to be able to, to, to change and to save those settings that you just put in. Okay, so if I come out of there, um, that's basically most things gone through in, in the menu. Uh, obviously, we're going to look at users in another session. Probably the last thing to look at, though, is the event log. So in the event log, uh, we can uh, have a look, we can search for um, all different uh, events which have happened. They may be clocking ins, clocking outs, um, exit buttons being pressed uh, every time uh, a connection is made to a PC, uh, every time the time is changed. So all events get recorded in the memory. Uh, and the memory can grow to, to a very large size over time. Um, so if you uh, if you did need to search for a particular event, I mean, normally you, you could use the software to do that, but if you, you can do it on the actual device itself if you wanted to do that. Um, if I come out of there, one option is uh, to delete the log, um, which you can do as long as you've make, you know, realized that once you've cleared it down, that's it, you're never gonna get it back again. So you must make sure that your software has got all of the information that it needs um, before you clear that log file. Um, sometimes we clear the log files down every couple of years just to keep the, the size of the file uh, manageable and stop thing, stops things slowing down a little bit. Um, so I'll delete all logs and there we go, all log files are deleted. So we just press the escape key a few times and it gets us back to our normal date and time display. You notice that the uh, date format has now changed. Uh, we've got a little uh, symbol at the top which shows us the fact we've got uh, a network connection. Uh, so that's all I really wanted to look at in this particular session. We'll be looking at another session um, where we can enrol employees and administrators. Thank you.